Good morning and thank you for joining today's Grad Prof Dev webinar on Career Center Resources. My name is Heather Brandt and I'm going to be moderating today's webinar. I'm Associate Dean in the Graduate School and Professor of Health Promotion, Education and Behavior in the Arnold School of Public Health here at the University of South Carolina. Today's webinar is going to provide you with an overview of Career Center resources and will be presented by Holly Johnson. And I'm going to turn the webinar over to her in just a moment. We hear from our graduate students all the time that you are interested in taking advantage of career readiness resources. And guess what? We have a great Career Center right here on campus in multiple locations that you can access their services. And sometimes we also hear from grad students that you feel some of those services may not be for you. Well, in today's webinar, you'll learn about how you can take advantage of the resources through the Career Center that are available and make them work for you as you prepare for what comes next after you complete your graduate degree. So before we get started, a few reminders for those of you who are viewing the webinar live. Please take a moment to familiarize yourself with the webinar toolbar. We have handouts available today, and you can access these handouts under the handouts ribbon on the webinar toolbar. If you have questions at any point during today's webinar, enter those questions under the questions ribbon on the webinar toolbar. If you are viewing the recorded version, or if you have any issues accessing the handouts as one of the live viewers, please email gradprofdev at sc.edu to get a PDF of today's webinar slides. Well, now that you've heard enough from me, I'm going to turn over the controls to our amazing presenter today, <laughs> Holly Johnson, and she is going to take you through an overview of the Career Center resources. Holly, take it away. All right, thank you so much, Heather, and that was a very kind introduction. I am so excited to have the chance to connect with y'all in this webinar, and I know, you know, for us in the Career Center, things have really been heating up when it comes to the idea of planning for your job search. Um, usually right around this time of year, it's spring break, February, March, um, folks are looking at their goals for the year ahead, thinking about what their needs are going to be when it comes to job searching. And so acknowledging that y'all are probably doing amazing work in your grad programs, um, and we in the Career Center want to help be conduits of resources and information for you to make your lives a little bit easier as you get into that job search process, which um, can be a little bit tricky, especially if you, you know you're searching, let's say, industry, academia, nonprofit, public sector. Um, there's a lot of different kind of applications of the skills that you're using in your grad programs. And so we have some really tangible, practical tools. I like to talk about especially the resources that we have online as just being tools that are going to go in your tool belt um, so that you can utilize them to work for you, like Heather said. And um, one thing that we talk about, you know, it, as a career coach, and maybe I should have introduced myself more fully, um, I work with students predominantly in the College of Arts and Sciences as a career counselor. And, and what we do when you're planning for a job search coming up is, first of all, um, start with reflecting on yourself and what your goals are, because your job search is not going to be the exact same as your classmates, your advisors. Um, so there's, there's going to be some decisions that you're going to make about how to utilize your, your actions and your efforts in the most effective way possible. So first of all, really basic question, thinking about what is your desired professional outcome after graduate school? Do you know exactly what kind of job it is that you're looking for um, after you get done with your studies? Are you still exploring different options? Being on either end of, of the spectrum there will kind of dictate how you approach using online resources to help put you in the most advantageous position in the job search. So I'll talk to you about my best recommendations, whether you do know what that exact career outcome is or if you're still kind of sorting out where, where that professional application might be. Another thing to think about is what your timeline is for your job search. You know, many of y'all might have heard the, the statistic that it takes around those 40, four to six months in terms of an average job search. So if you know that you're going to be on the market for a position come this summer, late fall, even into 2021, um, I don't think there's ever a bad time to begin. And usually our best advice is begin as early as possible when it comes to preparing for um, this process so that future you um, doesn't have to worry about any kind of sticky situation so that you've got a good strategy 
and that you can invest your full amount of time and effort into the fun part of this process, which is selecting um, the kind of opportunity that's going to be right for you and the thing that's going to be the best fit for you and your growth. And so the last question I'd have for you to reflect on is where are you in the process of preparing just your personal tool belt um, with documents, with, with things like your, your CV, recommendations, um, cover letters, statements of intent. Have you prepared these documents before? Is that something that you need to brush up on? Sometimes when you look at online job search tools, they can be best used when you already have an arsenal of information to kind of um, you know, develop and work with so that you can present yourself to best effect to whatever future audience it is that you're thinking about. So if you have everything all polished up, that's incredible. If you still need help, um, you know, with getting those things ready, just know that that's what we do. Um, we're here to help out with all of that. So something I want to affirm before I get into these resources um, is that the Career Center can assist you with three main functions of the job search. So first of all, helping you prepare for actually seeking out and finding opportunities. We have a, a division in our Office of Employer Relations, which is a group of professionals that just goes out working directly with different types of companies and employers, um, helping cultivate opportunities that are going to be accessible to USC students and also giving us insight and advice about what the most important qualities are for you to make yourself more employable. Um, so helping you prepare for the job search is one of the biggest uh, dynamic functions of what we do. Number two, connecting you to available opportunities. So um, if you have an idea of what your desired outcome is for, for the job search, we hope to be able to just basically take what you have to offer and connect you to that employer who'd be looking. Um, and then the third piece of that would be expanding on your personal connections and your network. As grad students, I know you probably all already have folks on your team, um, people that are rooting for you in your job search. But you know, if you are, let's say, looking in a professional industry where you don't have you know, as many contacts as you might want, you're looking in a different city, different region of interest, expanding on that networking piece is really important because they tell us you know, around 80% of jobs people tend to get through personal connections and recommendations. So some of these online resources are gonna prime you to help expand that network. So the Career Center, how do people like me help out? You know, if you need support on any functions, like, like we help, um, we, we basically run appointments that would include choosing a career path, career assessments, um, full-time job search skills, interview preparation, mock interviews, CV preparation, job fair prep. Um, so you can always work with a counselor like me through the very particular specific questions and concerns that you have, um, because each of you, like, like we mentioned, has a very different situation when it comes to the job search. Um, so we have advisors who are always here to support you in that. We also have drop-in hours, um, open office hours in our Thomas Cooper Library office every afternoon from 1 to 4 p.m. If you just want to have a really quick pep talk or a check-in or a resume review um, and just kind of get things situated in that short-term kind of circumstance. And so what I want to do is, is introduce you to all of us. Um, career counselors in the Career Center, we're divided into different academic colleges. Um, so I work with students more predominantly in the math, sciences, and psychology, but there is a professional staff member who's going to be your point of contact. And we've got those folks um, thrown up on the screen here for you to check out um, and write down their contact information if you want to reach out to them directly. Although we do have a conduit, which is our handshake system, where you can actually book appointments with any of these people online, which hopefully can help expedite that process of getting you on our calendars and getting you closer to the help that you need with your job search. So with the resources that I'm going to walk you through today, there's five main ones that I want to mention. And so I want to kind of introduce these and the learning outcomes of, of this endeavor. So the first resource that we're going to talk about is our handshake system. So this is our University of South Carolina specific career services tool um, where it's kind of like our everything. You can find positions that are targeted at USC students, schedule appointments with us, see all the career events that are happening. We also have an app. So the Career Fair Plus app um, is a really cool new product that we've, we've pulled online this year. So if you're ever looking to attend a career fair or a big on-campus event that involves employers, um, the Career Fair Plus app is going to give you information for how you can connect with recruiters, background info about who's hiring, what kind of students. 
So I want to kind of show you all what that can do. We have a, a career shift platform, which is a job search kind of aggregating tool, a personal dashboard where you can compile information that you need to access about all the different job postings online, contact information for professionals. We have another product called Big Interview. It's really cool. Interview prep tends to be the thing that I think most folks have the most nervousness about, and myself included. I know it's a hard thing to think about getting ready for that interview process. So Big Interview has a lot of different facets to help you feel confident when you go into that interview situation. And then the bonus one I'm going to show you, it's not career center specific, um, but the LinkedIn alumni database is a really helpful tool that I use with most of my grad students to help introduce you to people who you could network with, um, reach out to for help and things of the sort. So I actually want, because you know Heather was kind enough to make a poll um, and asking y'all a little bit about your background with using career center resources. So if you wouldn't mind taking a second um, to take the poll that we've got here, and it's basically a yes or no question. Um, have you ever had a chance to use any of the resources that the Career Center has to offer? Um, you know, and it's something, please be honest. I, I just want to see where y'all are at so I can better gauge the way I explain these to what your answers are. So it looks like we're getting some results already, which is excellent. About 40% yes, 60% no. So that is very helpful. So maybe some of y'all have seen some of the things before. I want to kind of take you deeper into these resources. And for y'all that haven't used them yet, I hope you leave this webinar today knowing of at least one or two things that you're going to go home and check out on your own time. So now we're going to go ahead and get started with our first tool. So Handshake is our, like I said, career center platform. So if you do not else other than log in and activate your Handshake account, I'd be super happy because Handshake has a, a unique way of assisting you with your, your job search. Something that a lot of grad students come into a, a job search process with is anxiety about, like, let's say, you know, you're throwing yourself into um, a job search in the private sector or branching into an industry that you don't know a lot about, and you're worried about how much competition there's going to be for certain jobs, where you could stand um, in the candidate pool. Handshake is going to give you a sense of what kind of jobs are specifically targeted at graduates of this campus. So. Our employer relations division um, goes out and talks to employers and any company or organization that wants somebody with a background similar to yours is going to be posting their information on Handshake. So if you ever apply to a job on Handshake, usually there's a little bit less competition for those positions because it's targeted at this campus. Um, in Handshake, what you can do when you log in is there is a quiz or kind of a questionnaire where it's going to ask you what your expectations and goals are for your job search. And it's going to give you targeted information. Um, the more accurately you answer those questions, the better the algorithm is going to get calibrated. So, you know, go ahead, open your Handshake account and start playing around with that dashboard because um, it's going to be able to assist you. I think if you're getting started with your job search, like let's say coming up this summer or even if it's later this year into next year, it can be really helpful even if you're not actively searching for a job to begin combing through job postings, seeing what kind of resources are available to you. So Handshake you know, has a couple of different features that I want to kind of demo here. One thing that can be really great um, is you know, we've got our counselors over in the Career Center at the ready to help you out. And let's say you're thinking about the job search and you're just feeling kind of overwhelmed with the process. You've never done an interview before. You just like to see an expert's opinion about, you know, what you could be doing better. Here's how you're going to go ahead and make an appointment with us. So if you log into Handshake and you are in your portal and you see the Career Center tab up at the top right, you can actually select whatever kind of appointment you could you know, ever think of. Um, so those appointments are usually going to be 45 minutes to an hour. When you request the appointment, you, there's a little place where you can write a note to us where you can tell us exactly what you're thinking about. So, um, you know, because your needs are more specific as grad students, it can be helpful to just say like, hey, here's what I really need support on. You know, let's say you're, you're wanting to do a mock interview and you want us to pretend to be a very specific type of employer. Let's say um, somebody in an academic setting or someone in a private sector setting. Um, we can customize the experience that you have in the appointment to what your needs are. So go ahead and get on our calendars. Usually we have availability every single day of the week, Monday through Friday, um, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So 
go ahead and pre-book that. Sometimes the year gets a little bit busy, but luckily from here on out, especially in the spring semester, it tends to be a good time to plan to kind of begin talking to us in that regard. Let's say you're ready to start looking at job postings. So this is the most popular feature of Handshake by far. You go into your Handshake account, and what you're gonna see at the top of the page is a little tab called Jobs. You go to the job search. So this is where the more you know about what you're after, the better these results are going to be. So you can select as much criteria as you can think of about your job search. So, you know, maybe you're thinking my dream life would involve me living in this specific city, state. You can set a location criteria so that you're only finding positions within a certain, you know, geographic range, a mile radius of that city or state. You can also search by type of employment. If you know you're looking for a full-time job or an internship or something like that, you can set that up. And the keyword function is the part that um, you might have to really be thoughtful about. Um, so if you know, you know, let's say you're about to graduate and your grad program has prepared you in you know, a very specific type of skill set, you can often set up the, the keyword function to hit on those types of skills so that the parameters when you, you get the results are calibrated to that and you're going to get better results and probably more you know, higher volume of jobs that you actually want to apply to um, over on the left hand panel. So, you know, let's say you're playing around with this job search and then you have a search that you really like, um, you know, it's perfect. You're getting some really good results. You don't have to log into Handshake and like do this every single day of the week. Um, that can be tedious. You've got enough going on when you're getting into this. So whenever you set it up, you can actually save your search. There's a little um, a, a prompter that's going to pop up that say, do you want to save this? You click save your search and then you can name that search, whatever you want. Handshake also lets you set up notifications. So you can download the app and have it on your phone. You can have it on desktop. Um, it will email you at a certain interval. If you want to get notifications about new postings on a daily basis, basis weekly basis, monthly basis, um, you have control of that process. So when you're ready, you know, say you see a posting, um, it looks interesting. You can look at the, the listing and make sure that what you've got to offer is exactly what they're looking for. Um, and one personal bit of advice that I'd give to you, this is kind of um, on a bit of a tangent. In Handshake, when you see postings, um, sometimes you see the listing of what exact type of major or GPA or background they're looking for. And you think to yourself, well, maybe I have like 60% of those things or 80% of those things, but I'm not the quote unquote perfect candidate with all the little green check marks. Go ahead and apply anyway. Um, a lot of times the postings themselves are written by HR specialists who aren't necessarily the folks who are going to be going through like the hiring process with you. And a lot of employers tell us that they'd rather you not self-select yourself out of the search. So you don't have to match all the criteria and have all green check marks in order for you to get on the top of, of someone's shortlist for interview. So when you're ready to actually apply for the position, what you do in Handshake um, is you basically going to go to your personal account and you can upload copies of your job search documents. So it helps kind of expedite things a little bit. Um, it works like many other social media tools where what you do with your profile um, is something that, you know, is fully customizable. You don't necessarily, um, there's not a right or wrong way to kind of deal with it. So um, I always say my best advice is it's always better to err on the side of more information rather than less. Um, if you upload a copy of your CV, you fill out education, experience, skills, activities. If an employer does look at your profile, it's going to help you basically make a better impression on them. So make sure that your handshake profile is fully built out and then you can respond to these job postings usually with like a two-click process you add your resume and your cover letter to the application hit send and then you're in good shape so whereas um, having to kind of go through the job search in and of itself is a time-consuming endeavor handshake hopes to make it a little bit more straightforward and streamlined for you so when you get ready for it, you can basically upload as many job search documents as you want. Um, and I'd encourage you to save them something like distinct. So, um, you know, job search one, two, three, four, so that you don't accidentally choose the wrong document. But when you get on a roll, it does make it a little bit faster and easier for you to really put yourself out there and apply to as many jobs as you might be thinking about.
So other things to consider in Handshake. So um, the example I'll use is we, we have um, a lot of cool career related events going on all the time. Um, last week we had our big career fairs where we had like over 200 employers who came on campus um, basically they're here to recruit students like you yesterday we had like the cia just like popped out of nowhere and was like hey we're doing a, an info session so if you want to know about like those kind of events or if you want to attend those events in handshake we have a directory of all the career fairs all the info sessions and we even have on-campus interviewing so some employers come to our office in thomas cooper um, rent an interview space and basically just interview folks on the spot so you know if you want to just get some immediate feedback on, on your candidacy and reach out to a very specific type of employer you can do that in Handshake. You can favorite career fairs and you can even favorite employers that are of interest. So um, in Handshake, it gives you the ability to search. And so, you know, let's say maybe you're thinking about, oh, I really want to look at these, you know, government agencies to work for or these nonprofits um, or these private companies. You can basically favorite them and it will notify you, say, hey, ding, 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 um, you know, Duke Energy is going to be on campus or, um, you know, state of South Carolina is going to be here at this date and this time. So check that out because that can be a really cool way to connect with people in person. Um, often when you get in front of people and that face to face capacity, it helps you um, reduce the amount of time you spend job searching because folks tend to, to like to connect with people in that way. So the career fair, each one is going to have a page where you can see all the employers who have stated an intention to come. And you can filter by different categories, different majors, things like that. So Handshake is a perfectly good way um, for you to do this kind of process in this system. Um, but there's another way that you could theoretically look at what kind of employers would be coming to campus. And so I want to show you another thing you could think about getting. In addition to Handshake, we've got the Career Fair Plus app, which is really cool. It's a new one for us. Um, you can download it on the Apple Store or Google Play. And so for these big scale recruitment events, if you download the Career Fair Plus app, it helps you go into that type of environment with a cooler head because sometimes a career fair um, can be a little bit overwhelming and chaotic you know imagine you know for us it's usually they, they take place in convention centers um, there's a bunch of people talking at the same time you don't necessarily want to walk into those environments without a plan of action um, and intention so with the career fair plus app if you consider downloading it what you do is you select your role so you're in the app you say that you're a student or a potential candidate and then your dashboard is going to be customized for you. So select the University of South Carolina, and then all of those events that are coming up are gonna start being pre-populated in the app. So if you know that you're gonna be free this day in this time, select that fair or that event. And then inside that event, what you get to see um, is information about what to expect. If you need to bring anything special, it's gonna be in there. There's also contact information. If you, like, let's say last minute are like, I'm not sure about this. Um, you can email our event planner in there and add it to your personal Google calendar, get directions to the location. The thing that's most helpful and the part that I spend the most time looking at um, is exploring the fair because the employer piece is often the one that people are most concerned with. Um, so, you know, before you go to a fair, you usually want to check to see, is there going to be anybody here who's hiring in my industry, in my functional area, so that you could check to see if that's a good use of your time. So up at the top of the app, you're going to go to the employer tab and then begin to filter by all those different types of companies or organizations that are recruiting. So you can select your, your major or functional area and see if there's any employers who have stated an intention of hiring people with your skill set. Um, if you are, and I know as grad students, it might be that you have your undergraduate um, major in one thing and graduate degree in something different, and maybe you also have developed a different skill on the side. Um, it's not going to be kind of verifying that you are in a certain major, so you can select as many different disciplines as you want so that you get the most accurate information about who might be looking for someone um, with a skill set like yours. So parameters about the position types that they're recruiting, if it's for internship, part-time, or full-time positions will be there and all the different grade levels or the types of students that they're looking to connect with. If it's an event that's happening in, like, let's say a bigger capacity, there's going to be a map of, of who you could connect with. So rather than going in and having to see, all right, like, where is, um, you know, Boeing or where is, um, you know, Vanguard, it's going to give you a sense of of those employers that you starred, where are they at? 
So let's say you only have like 30 minutes to go to a job fair. You need to get in and get out efficiently. The map function is going to let you see, okay, this is exactly where I need to go um, so that you're not having to necessarily do all of that legwork in the moment at that time, because you probably have other things that you're thinking about at that point. So check the Career Fair Plus app and see all the things that are coming up. And for us, you know, we tend to have events sprinkled throughout the year. So um, with career fairs, there's usually two really big career fairs that happen each year. We just had the one in February and there will be another one coming up in September. But we also have smaller, like kind of what we call them boutique events um, that are more discipline specific. Like, for example, we have like a health professions one. Um, we have some like sustainability and energy career fairs and things like that. There's even virtual career fairs that you can sign up for so that you could literally be at your house in your pajamas um, and network with people. And so there actually are going to be instructions about the virtual career fairs in the Career Fair Plus app as well. So that was the, the first two resources. And now we're getting into probably my, my new favorite tool, Big Interview. So when grad students are thinking about getting ready for the job search, one of the questions that I get most commonly is, up until now, the only interviews I've ever done have been in a very specific setting. So maybe they've been for research positions, maybe they've been more academic in nature, Maybe your worry is that I am not adequately prepared for the kinds of interviews that I think I want to be doing in the, the jobs that are of interest to me. Big interview is really great because I think it can help you assuage some of those fears. You know, in general, I mean, there, there's different ways to deal with interview preparation. And some people are perfectly fine with, with winging an interview. And I think if that's you, you know, more power to you. But I'm the kind of person who likes to have um, a ton of, of of game plans and prep work. And so if that's you, I think that this platform can really be customized for what your needs are. So at a surface level, what Big Interview was created to do was to simulate the interview experience um, and basically serve as a mock interviewing tool. So you could, in the comfort of your home, um, use your, your laptop or your computer, turn on your webcam, um, and begin to just talk through your interview responses. This can be particularly helpful because a lot of times with job searching these days, the first and second round interviews are often at a distance. They're either phone interviews or Skype, Zoom. A lot of companies and organizations are using online platforms for screening applicants. And I know when I was job searching way back in the day, that was not something that I had a lot of familiarity with. Um, we're not usually using Skype for this type of purpose. So Big Interview will let you kind of experience a little bit of the awkwardness at first so that you can troubleshoot you know issues that might be coming up with with your backdrop with your microphone with your vocal to tone and it can be really really hard to hear yourself um, speak through interview questions i know whenever i do it i'm like cringing so i'm like oh my gosh i sound like that and um, that's my tone of voice and my pacing but it can be a really helpful learning tool for you to do it in advance so that if there's any issues, you can correct them before you know, it gets to be extreme or it's negatively impacting your, your job search. So Big Interview is a resource that you have access to, like anything, um, it's, it's paid for. You get into it with your USC credentials. So whatever you use to get into Self Service Carolina, you'll use to make an account in here. And this is what your dashboard is going to look like when you log in. So there's going to be different choices that you have to make about what you want this platform to do. And I want you to know that um, you don't necessarily have to even be using Big Interview for the video interview practice in order for this to work for you. Um, there are some features that are kind of um, deeper into this that I'm actually going to talk to you about that could be helpful even if you don't want to actually film yourself and record yourself in that way. So the first function is, you know, the classic. I want to show you the practice interviews. So right now you're on the cusp of your job search. Maybe you have an idea of a couple of industries that you're thinking about branching into. In Big Interview, at the top of the screen, you're going to see a practice tab. If you click on that, it's going to give you different choices. So these are simulated interviews that are created because or, or with a a, a positive feature that they have basically asked HR specialists in each of these industries and fields, what are the most commonly used questions for professionals at this stage? So you can sort this by industry, by competency. Um, you can even select like kind of special topics interviews like government, federal um, scenarios, veterans interviews, admissions interviews, if you're looking for things in a more academic context. 
So the questions that are going to pop up are going to be a little bit more relevant to you in that very particular type of framework. So what you do is once you select um, the one that's of interest, so you would say, all right, I really know that I want to be doing a mock interview today. So let's see what I could do with this. With the mock interviewing, um, the fun part about this is that you get to kind of choose. It kind of reminds me of like a Sims type of, of feeling um, where you can choose your, your opponent. Um, that Maybe that's too negative, but the person is on the other end of the screen. So you can select whether or not you want it to be a standard interview, a challenging one, or if you want it to really be like a bad cop on the other side of the screen. Um, so pick your poison there in terms of what's going to challenge you. Um, you can choose for entry level positions, mid level, senior level managerial so for those of you that maybe um, know that you're going into the job search with a little bit more experience um, you can make sure that that's a more suitable interview for somebody you know with the background that you've got so you choose your player there and then the simulation will begin um, so the video itself um, will start playing and you can record yourself um, and so what people typically do once they record themselves is um, play it back um, take inventory of your impressions but the cool part about um, big interview too is that there is an artificial intelligence feature which will give you automatic feedback about um, you know kind of commonly seen mistakes or things that can be troubling so the ones that I personally run into when I record myself in big interview is like you of hands and like gestures and um, tone of voice and vocal tics. It'll pick up on that so that you could just be more mindful and that those um, maybe unconscious behaviors won't necessarily be something that trips you up when it's the real deal. Another thing that's really great with Big Interview is that you can save all of your practices um, and potentially those could be sent to other people. So Maybe you have a really good relationship with, with an advisor, um, a professional in your field, like a past practicum supervisor. You can save the recording and send that to somebody that you trust and also get their feedback. Um, or you could send it to one of us in the Career Center. If you're not able to come in and actually do like a mock interview with us, we'd be happy to take a look at what your interview performance looks like and give you some feedback in there. So I hope that you consider, you know, just giving it a shot because it is, you know, even though at first sometimes it can be a little bit strange to see yourself on screen and to, to talk through these questions, almost like nine times out of 10, the more practice you do, the more fluid and natural it is when you actually have this be the real deal, whether it's an upcoming Skype interview or you're sitting right in front of a real human. Um, when you get into your real interviews, you want your mind to be entirely on making like really dynamic, interesting responses and not about the practical things. So a feature that you can think about too with Big Interview is, you know, maybe you just want to brush up on like interview conventions. Um, for someone who maybe just hasn't done a lot of professional formal interviews, you know, it can be nice to just hear like lessons about how to handle common interview situations. So Big Interview actually has an interview preparation curriculum that you can play through. You can have it in the background, like when you're like doing chores and stuff like that, and just listen to what they have to say about like, you know, um, stress questions or how to answer, um, what are your weaknesses? Or what are your strengths? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, sometimes those classic interview scenarios can be the ones that trip us up the most because we don't think about them, but there is or there are best practices to how you handle those different situations. So the interview prep curriculum is really nice because it can help you just get ready to have that game plan and, you know, to utilize the strengths that you've got to best effect. Um, and so the curriculum can be, I think overall it's several hours, but you can just choose the lessons that are more relevant to you save them and it'll actually kind of chart your progress. So you can come back to it at any point and listen to things right before you go into an interview. If you want them to kind of give you a pep talk, you can always have that information at the ready. Another thing, this is actually what I personally use Big Interview for is there's an answer builder tool. So notes and preparation can be really helpful because um, maybe many of you know when you, you do an interview, um, there is a, a method of responding to questions it's, you know, traditionally called the STAR method, situation, task, action, result, or approach and result. 
And it is a framework that helps you um, be better understood and to make sure that you are not rambling and on a tangent with your response, but that you're focusing on the kind of information that any hiring manager needs to hear. So STAR method isn't the kind of thing that naturally just springs up in the way that we answer questions. Sometimes you need to focus on it. So the answer builder will actually help you um, First of all, reflect on your stories. A good interview is one that feels like a storytelling endeavor where you've collected a group of narratives that illustrate the kind of professional that you are and it highlights the, the best attributes that you've got. So the answer builder will help you name those stories. It will store those stories for you and then help you break that down into situation, task, action, and result. Um, and all that information, like you can, you know, kind of save it personally, you can print it, um, you can put it on your, your desk. So let's say you've got a phone interview coming up, you could just pull up the big interview answer builder and use that to jog your memory. If you get a question, and you're like, oh my gosh, I have mentally blanked. What, what did I do, um, you know, with my professional history? That note taking and the preparation can be really nice so that it keeps you focused so that you don't feel put on the spot and that you cannot neglect or forget about those most powerful stories that you know you've got on your background. Um, so even back to what we mentioned earlier, if you're not actively job searching like at this very moment, going ahead and doing some of this housekeeping work like building out your profiles and having like your interview responses already kind of prepared can be excellent because when the time comes for you to apply for something and to be interviewed you often don't want to be scrambling and putting things together because at that moment there are just other things on your mind so do future you some favors and you know put a little bit of time and energy into this i know that's something that i wish i had internalized when i was in grad school um you know because it always feels like there's an emergency concern but your your professional life is an emergency um it's something that won't necessarily kind of hit you on the head every single day but it's so worth the time and effort that you put into it and i think that what you put into it you will certainly get out of it so the fact that you have even tuned in or you're watching this webinar today is a great indication that you are proactive and forthright about getting into this so i'm proud of you all for taking the first step another platform i want to show you and this is one of the best kept secrets on campus a lot of folks don't know that they have access to this um, career shift is a really cool job search dashboard so I'm going to compare this to Handshake. Handshake is great, but Handshake is very um, concentrated on positions that are targeted at USC students. And sometimes that can, um, it, it shows a limited scope of what kind of positions could be out there for you. So maybe you know that you're not job searching in the Southeast and the Mid-Atlantic. And those are the regions where we tend to find the most jobs get posted on Handshake. CareerShift is going to pull all the postings that exist on all of the different job posting websites. So if you have already looked at like Indeed and Glassdoor and LinkedIn and Handshake and maybe some of the professional associations that you're a part of as a part of your grad program, CareerShift is going to draw all those things together put it all in one place so that you can streamline this process a little bit and not have to split hairs about again logging into your accounts every day or every week and losing time in that regard so in career shift this is what it would look like if you logged into your account and the first function that can be really helpful is that job search function so what you see right here is that job search portal what i would recommend you do is do an advanced search so right in the middle of the screen um, there's a way that you can do that toggle over there with the advanced search you basically get to select not only the region and the area that's of interest and, and set that radius for how comfortable you are with a certain commute you can add as many keywords as you want you can add any industry that you're thinking about so if you know that you're job searching in academia or nonprofit or you know private sector any industry you can add that the only downside to career shift is that sometimes when you do it um, if you just look for full-time positions you get like like 20,000 results and it's like oh my goodness what would I even do with that kind of information so the more you add the better this is going to be for you and then adding that advanced search criteria if you know that you have like personal non-negotiables even about um, you know salary and experience level and, and things of the sort sponsorship visa status I'd encourage you to select that so that you get the best recommendations because I don't want it to be an overwhelming amount of information or a flood of information for you 
in um, career shift, there's a way that, you know, once you find job postings from anywhere across the country, if you're looking in different areas, you can save this search too. So whenever you save a search, we always call that like a job agent where that personal job agent um, is able to notify you as job postings come online. So let's say you're job searching actively right now in a certain city, or maybe you're not job searching until later this year or next year. It can be cool to go ahead and set up your job agents and have it contact you. And so, you know, whenever you start getting ready for this type of experience, um, you are thinking about the job search for yourself, you are already kind of calibrated. Your mind has seen so many postings um, and you have read through the parameters and the kind of skills that they're looking for. So in Career Shift, you can basically save your search. It's there for you. You set up those email preferences for the number of times that you want. Um, you can save individual jobs for later. So let's say you've read a job and you're like, man, this really seems like the kind of thing that I could see myself doing, but I don't think I can apply it right at this minute because I've got something to do today. Save that job for later and get back into it. And you can also upload all of your like job search documents, resume, cover letters in this platform, and it will give you that information for how you can apply to those positions. So a really nice resource. I use this all the time. Like I said, best kept secret because um, I think it's something that can be really useful, but it's not necessarily super out there. So I'm going to at the end of this presentation, I'm going to show you all how to get to each of those individual resources so that you have the ability to find all of those. And one other resource I want to show you just in career shift itself is the contact search portal. So the contact search is really nice because we mentioned um, a lot of the ways that people find jobs and positions is through like personal referrals, through networking, through asking. So you can always go to a job search, the quote unquote traditional way and apply to positions that get posted. And or you can also you know, look to see who is working in a division that's similar to the one that you see yourself in. Or you can reach out to recruiters or specialists and basically just get some more specific content about what they're looking for before you even start searching yourself. So CareerShift has a contact search database where you can say, all right, if I know that I'm considering these employers and I want to see who's working there, you can get their professional email address and phone number. And if you felt so inclined, you could always, you know, reach out. I'm not going to say that you have to do that because everyone has a different comfort level with it. But not only is there nothing wrong with it, that can tend to really pay off. Um, and a lot of grad students, you know, who do find really cool positions will come back and tell us that, you know, sometimes all it took was reaching out to somebody and getting their resume passed to the Right person and so I'd encourage you to be brave and bold with it because you never know what could happen um, and with reaching out to people directly a lot of folks like to be helpful so you aren't necessarily you know coming right out and saying I want a job but asking individuals for insight and advice and information you know about what you could do to better put yourself in a good position with your job search so definitely check out that feature that's one of my favorites and then it looks like the one of the last tools I want to show you is the LinkedIn alumni search tool. So maybe some of y'all like already have a LinkedIn account um, and LinkedIn is like a lot of these other kind of um, platforms where you can fill out a profile, upload your resume, upload information about you. And that can be a really great way you know, to utilize LinkedIn. But I want to show you just a different part of this system. So. In LinkedIn, what you do is if you have an account, log into it and go to the University of South Carolina. And if you have that listed as like where you're getting your grad degree, it should be an automatic thing on your profile. If you go to the USC page and you click on alumni, it's over on the left hand side in this little panel. Click on alumni and then there's going to be this kind of live interactive database which has at this stage the most accurate information about where graduates of the university have gone. Um, so I know like in your department and your discipline, your you know, faculty have probably told you about examples of people who've gone on to do great things. And you know, that's I think a great way you know, to begin. If you want to just see really kind of cold objective information about where people go in different industries, in different cities with different employers, that information is going to be out here. So, you know, for you, you're thinking, all right, if I want to be in a certain city, so I just selected this one. If I wanted to be in like, let's say, you know, DC, I went to the alumni search tool 
I searched my background, which is, you know, education, and I want to see like where people work. The top employers are going to be listed on the right. You can click any employer that you're into, um, you know, and see what comes up. You can search by skill set. Of course, like major is a function of that. If you scroll to the bottom, there's going to be the actual directory information of everybody who matches that criteria so you know if you know like hey i want to i might want to be in the city um you know doing this very specific type of work you can see if there's people already there who are doing it you can even set it up so that there's a more recent like graduation term so like if you want to see recent grads um you can say that and then if you wanted to reach out to these people usually folks that are on linkedin are the kind of people that are amenable to connecting and talking and um you know communicating with you about what your needs might be so you can connect with them on linkedin you can direct message them and you know let's say you're using two of these tools at once you can cross-reference their name in career shift and find their professional email address you know and shoot them you know a little message about you and, and then kind of thinking about the job search in that way so check this out because for grad students this tends to be you know and, and all that i'm telling you is my um very personal impressions of what's tend to, tended to work for students in the past, but this has been a really lucrative um, and I think effective use of folks time is just using that USC connection. Or if you've gone to undergraduate institution in a different school, you can do the exact same thing with that school. But using that as the natural kind of icebreaker to make contacts, maybe if you don't already have people in a certain network, but you want to build that up, do it before you even know that you need it. So if your job search is something that's just on the kind of horizon for you, get, a bit, get ahead of it and start meeting people, you know, and see what could happen. And this tends to be like, you never really know. A lot of graduates will come back and say that, um, you know, they connected with a person who was able to, you know, refer them to a certain division that had an opening. And that information isn't always accessible through just like online job posting portals. So if you want that really descriptive content about like, what the internal workings of a company or organization are um, not only is it appropriate for you to do that it's kind of expected no one's going to be put off by you asking and it's always better to err on the side of being forthright and taking initiative because a lot of companies and organizations like to see that you're that independent with the job search so I know I ran y'all through a whole bunch of different platforms and I want to make sure that you can tell where to actually get to all of these so on the Career Center's website, which is www.sc.edu slash career, if you go to um, on the left hand side about the Career Center as a choice and you go to Career Center tools, there's all kinds of stuff posted in there. So the tools would be all the systems that I just talked about. And if you haven't already made an account in those, all you got to do is just use your USC credentials, um, activate those accounts, and you're going to be good to go. All of those systems are actually accessible to you forever. Um, you know, they're never going to go away. It's not going to be that you graduate and a year later it's going to be gone. So check that out. We also have a publications and a staff toolbox too so if you are looking for you know just like information about really basic stuff like cv preparation and, and cover letter writing and recommendations um, you can even check out our publications toolbox and just get a sense of all the different documents that have been posted in any case you know as i know i just ran you through a lot of content in a relatively short period of time so as you need you know direct assistance um, it looks like some of y'all may not have interacted with us before. So uh, our main career center squad, and that's a lot of us, um, is located in Thomas Cooper Library on level five. So, you know, if, if you want to have like an hour long appointment to talk through, you know, a lot of really specific content, I'd recommend going to Handshake, booking an appointment and doing it like that. But if you have a really easy, short question to ask, we do have those open walk in hours in Thomas Cooper every afternoon, 1 to 4 p.m. You don't need an appointment for that. When you do come for a formal appointment, a lot of folks or grad students will ask like what they need to bring. There is nothing necessarily that you need to do to prepare, but if you have like your your CV or you've got cover letters or you know really specific questions, I'd encourage you to just make a list of everything that you want us to work on so that by the end of that conversation, you feel really confident and you're ready to just tackle whatever you know problem or issue is that you have ahead of you. Other locations, so we have a couple of satellite offices. 
um, you know, if y'all are in the College of Engineering or computing or um, even just closer to that location, they do the same walk-in hours in that office in Swearingen, um, which is a suite right next to the little cafe there. So you can go in for walk-ins. If you're an engineering and computing student, you can book an appointment in that office with those career counselors exactly the same way and handshake. And the other um, location that we've been working with, and that's because I'm in arts and sciences, and if y'all are CAS students, you probably have gotten um, harassing emails from me about special events and things. We do some career-related um, content and workshops in the Student Excellence Collaborative, which is in Flynn Hall, um, room 107. And some of our career coaches actually do career coaching out of the private office in Flynn Hall. So in Handshake, what will happen is when you book your appointment, it's going to tell you where you go. Um, so just check out the little location tab. You're either going to be probably in Thomas Cooper Library, Swear and Jenner, Flynn Hall. But we do have those types of professionals at the ready whenever you might need it. So whether it's in March or April or any month beyond that, if you're listening later on, um, we work 12 months a year, like you said, from nine to five pretty much. So definitely let us know what we could do to make this process easier and connect with us in other ways. So um, like our website is www.sc.edu slash career. Um, you can call our main line. That number is listed there or email us and we can get you situated with what you need. Um, we also do have a couple of social media platforms. My favorite one that we post on is Instagram because usually if we have um, student profiles or employer events happening, um, it's going to go to Instagram first. So consider following us at UFSC Careers um, and see what kind of content we have to share. So at this point, that covers, it looks like a lot of the, or all the things that I wanted to talk with y'all about. And again, I appreciate your attention and, and your efforts in listening to this. It's been great getting opportunities with you. Thank you so much, Holly. That was so informative and you certainly covered a wide range of the resources that are available in the Career Center and especially some that are going to be particularly useful for graduate students. So I want to run through a few of the Grad Prof Dev programs that are available to you this spring. And while I do that, I hope you will take a moment to enter questions that you have for Holly about these resources and the Career Center in under the questions ribbon on the webinar toolbar. So please go ahead and start typing in your questions as I run through these uh, upcoming events. So first, our full schedule for the spring semester has been released and we're about halfway through these regularly scheduled events. We will be announcing in the next few days our Graduate Student Appreciation Week events. That is from April 6th through the 10th. So there will be some additional uh, programs added to our offerings for the spring semester. You can always find this information on the graduate school calendar. Um, don't forget to check us out online across our various social media platforms. And today's Professional Development Friday topic is on mentorship. So if you have questions about mentorship and getting the mentoring you need as a graduate student, take a look at some of those resources that have been posted. The Grad Prof Dev Spring 2020 survey is open through March 6th. Uh, this survey is really important for us to plan for future offerings. We need to know what we're doing that you like and that you found to be helpful, as well as what we aren't doing or topics or uh, professional development areas that we're not yet including that are of great interest to you and how we can do that more effectively. Your information provided to us through this survey is used directly to plan for upcoming semesters. So please take a few minutes. And as a bonus, uh, we are drawing prizes. So today we'll be doing one of those drawings and there will be additional prizes next Friday as well. Uh, the University Libraries is partnered with the Graduate School to offer SHARP grads. SHARP grads is a program that they run for uh, graduate students to develop skills, habits, and research programs to help you be successful during your master's and doctoral program. They're offering this SHARP grads boot camp on March 12th during spring break, and there are still uh, slots available. Generally, this fills up. 
very quickly, but there are still some space, there's still some space available if you're interested. Uh, Discover USC is on April 17th at the Columbia Convention Center. And currently we are accepting abstracts for presentation in the three minute thesis competition or as part of the poster sessions and presenter registration to submit to be a presenter. It, the deadline is March 6th. You also as a graduate student can serve as a volunteer or as a reviewer. And that deadline is March 27th. Um, this year in the graduate school, we'll be unable to accept late submissions, so please do uh, submit by the deadline of March 6th. We also recorded a webinar earlier this month on writing abstracts for Discover USC, and you can access the recording using this link, is, link that's provided. As a reminder, these handouts are included under the handouts ribbon on the webinar toolbar. And if you need them, if you're listening to the recorded version or having trouble accessing these, you can email us at gradprofdev at sc.edu. And if you have any questions, please contact Wright Culpepper in the graduate school. We also, through the university's institutional memberships, have access to the National Center for Faculty Development and Diversity. These resources are also appropriate for graduate students. You can sign up using your university email address. The same is true for the National Postdoctoral Association. The university has a membership that we can take advantage of. So this was just a, a quick run through of our programs that remain for the spring, our upcoming announcement of programs during Graduate Student Appreciation Week, reminders about Sharp Grads, Discover USC, and also these university resources that as graduate students, you can take full advantage of. So uh, does anyone have any questions for our presenter today, for Holly? And if you're having trouble with the questions toolbar, you also can use the chat function if that's easier. We'll be able to see the chat information too. Well, hearing no questions, Holly was, of course, very comprehensive in her presentation of these many career center resources that are available to you. And we thank her for being a part of our Grad Prof Dev offerings to give graduate students uh, information about existing resources here on campus. So thank you for attending today's webinar. And just as one final reminder, if you are in need of today's handouts or slides, please email gradprofdev at sc.edu. Thank you and have a great day.